Hi guys, I just wanted to let you know that I've recently started a Patreon account. Here you'll be able to see every historic site I travel to, my research which goes into my videos, and medieval armour that I make during my apprenticeship as an armourer. There is no obligation, I've only put one tier on my page which is just $5 to help support the channel. Click the link on screen or in the video description, and cheers! <laughs> Some battles have rules to protect the soldiers who surrender. Unfortunately, some battles don't. Today we will uncover the truth about a very gruesome battle indeed, the largest and bloodiest battle ever fought on English soil. Unsurprisingly, this battle unfolded at the height of a War of the Roses. First, I feel it would be helpful to give you a brief overview of what had happened during the War of the Roses so far. It's a very tricky subject because such a lot happened in such a small space of time, but I will try to make it as simple as I can. The beginning of the bitter feud was due to both the Houses of York and the Houses of Lancaster, two very prominent houses during this time in England, both having claims to the throne through family relations. However, despite York possibly having stronger claims, they were not to be crowned. This began a dispute over who really should be the King of England. There was already a king in place before the start of the war, named Henry VI, son of Henry V, who had famously won the Battle of Agincourt in 1415 AD. Unfortunately, his son was not so courageous. In fact, it is said that he may have possibly been mentally ill, and preferred spending the treasury's gold on domestic issues rather than focusing on the war effort in France and protecting his country. Despite Henry V's multiple victories over the French during the Hundred Years' War, Henry VI's lack of leadership was forcing England to now lose land and retreat from the French. The House of York despised this, for among other reasons, the House of York were heavily invested in the war efforts, so moved to dethrone him, replacing him with Richard, the Duke of York. Through forceful talks and with the help of an army by his side, Richard had seized more power in England. Although he was later killed at the Battle of Wakefield in 1460, not to be confused with King Richard III, who was slain at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, the final main decisive battle during the War of the Roses. His successor, Edward, Earl of March, was now in control of Richard's forces and seeked revenge. All this led up to the carnage, which was the Battle of Towton. 1461 was a particularly difficult year for England. The country was being torn down the middle as the two dictating houses, Lancaster and York, locked horns over the crown of England. Earlier in the year, there had already been two battles between the two houses, Mortimer's Cross in February, which was a York victory. However, the victory celebrations were short-lived as a Lancastrian victory at the Second Battle of St Albans later in February had now left the Yorkists vulnerable. So it was barely spring, and already a lot of blood had been spilt at the hands of these two houses, and it was about to get a lot worse. After the capture of King Henry VI, Edward IV had proclaimed himself a new King of England. In a bid to protect his throne, he gathered a large army and marched towards Ferrybridge in Yorkshire with a scouting party led by the Earl of Warwick. Warwick's soldiers arrived at the Air River in Yorkshire to meet the awaiting Lancastrians. The Lancastrian army had destroyed the crossing over the river in anticipation for the Yorkists being hot on their heels. The Lancastrians only left a small but very determined force on the opposite side of the river to make it as difficult as possible for Edward's army to cross. On the 27th of March 1461, the river was half frozen due to a recent cold snap, and the heavily armoured men were forced to cross while not only trying not to drown, but also trying not to get shot at by the Lancastrian longbowmen who were sniping off any man at arms who tried to climb up the riverbank. Edward's forces took many casualties as they forced their way across the river, but they had pushed back the Lancastrian skirmish for now. This gave the York army enough time to establish a camp on the north side of the river and repair the wooden bridge, ready for the main bulk of Edward's army to cross. 
In the early hours of the next morning, the Yorkists were ambushed by a large raiding party of the Lancastrian men under the leadership of Lord Clifford and Lord John Neville. And while the Yorkist army tried to rally together to join the fight, several high-ranking officers were slain in the mass confusion of the unprecedented attack. Lord Fitzwalter and Warwick's own half-brother, named the Bastard of Salisbury, were two of approximately 3,000 people who lost their lives in the battle. The surviving troops retreated back over the river and tended to their wounds. Okay, so a bad start for King Henry IV and his Yorkist army. By the time the first half of the battle had ended, Edward's main forces had arrived to find that, again, the bridge had been destroyed. This time, Warwick sent his uncle, Lord Falkenberg, along with some heavy cavalry upstream to a ford in order to pursue the Lancastrian forces. Falkenberg charged into Lord Clifford's soldiers with his cavalry and, during the battle, Clifford removed his bever, a piece of steel armour that covers the throat and neck. He did this to feel less restricted when fighting. However, he was shot in the throat by an arrow. So, after witnessing the initial bloody defeat in the morning, then pushing back to win a victory later that day, enough blood had surely been spilt. Commence the Battle of Towton. The Battle of Towton would be Edward's way of proving he was the new king. Edward found that he was outnumbered by a considerable portion due to his reserve under the banner of the Duke of Norfolk not yet arriving on the field. The York army had between 25 to 30,000 men, however the Lancastrian army had between 30 to 35,000 men. Not that either side could really see the extent of each other's army, because there was a heavy snowstorm on the day of the battle. The Yorkist army immediately took advantage of this by Lord Falkenberg lining up his archers to fire with the wind, outranging the Lancastrian archers. There were even stories of Yorkist archers running forward from the battle lines and picking up the Lancastrian arrows that had fallen short, then shooting their own arrows back at them. Despite the Lancastrian army having picked a good defensive position, the storm and the constant hail of arrows forced the army to abandon its position and charge forward. Between 50 and 60,000 soldiers, many of which were covered head to toe in the finest steel armour, clashed in the middle of a snowstorm. The hours of hand-to-hand -hand combat that followed made the Battle of Towton one of the bloodiest days in medieval history for England. However, the Lancastrians were slowly getting pushed back, and once the Duke of Norfolk's banners were seen coming over the horizon, the Lancastrian lines began to waver. Over the next hour, more and more Lancastrian soldiers fled down the steep hill to the river. Unfortunately, as you could have probably guessed, the House of Lancaster and the House of York were not on good terms with each other in the run-up to Towton, not even in the context of open war. So much so, in fact, that before the battle the two houses had agreed neither side would take prisoners, it was all or nothing. The average soldier during the War of the Roses wouldn't have necessarily felt so steadfast towards their house as the noblemen above them did. Indeed, it was commonplace for soldiers to switch sides depending on which house was willing to pay more for their service. With this information, every man on the battlefield knew that there would be no quarter should they be captured, and no mercy. Lancastrian soldiers started running for their lives, breaking the lines, knowing that there was no chance of surviving if they were caught. They were trampling over their own men to be the first to make it over the river at the bottom of the hill to relative safety. It was an all-out panic. Knights were desperately tearing off their expensive armour and diving through the freezing waters to escape, being shot by the archers and hand cannoneers as they either made it to the other side of the river or drowned in the process. Edward deployed his mounted knights and lancers to cut down those who ran through the fields. Between 10 and 25,000 men died on the 29th of March, 1461 the vast majority of which were those fighting for the House of Lancaster, and hence this has gone down as one of the most bloody days in English history. I hope that you enjoyed this case study style video of the Battle of Towton. It's always been one of my favourite battles in history because I think it's very dramatic, and you get a greater sense of the true concept of war during the Middle Ages through how the battle unfolded. 
It was a very bloody conflict in the midst of an even bloodier war that lasted over 30 years. Of course, there were other notable battles during the War of the Roses, such as the Battle of St Albans, Wakefield, Tewkesbury, and of course, Bosworth. If you like this video, then perhaps I'll cover the others in a future video. But for now, thanks for watching.